the resistance. So last week started the uh, filming of episode nine, which is huge news. That was August 1st that that happened. Uh, JJ took to his, uh, as you put it, previously dormant Twitter account to tease us with Chewie, Finn, and what appears to be Ray. I think we're leaning on Ray on this one uh, in the Falcon cockpit as the first day began to wrap. Now, we also got a couple of the tweets from like Vic Mahoney, who's the second unit director who we, uh, you know, who was announced back in April. Um, and it appears that, you know, she's taken images of where she is currently. And we've seen, you know, some other screenshots of what the outside of the Cardington airship sheds look like. So it's plausible if you want to put on the tinfoil hat a little bit that uh, the, it might start shooting uh, at the Cardington airship sheds, uh, along with her tweets. There's all sorts of other tweets from everybody else. John Boyega, Mark Hamill, Anthony Daniels. They're all super excited to get back into this, um, saying things about um, how excited they are for the uh, movie to get started. And uh, a lot of things about Carrie as well. Um, Lacey, let's get back to that, uh, that picture that JJ released. Uh, it was a really cool picture. I think most people just saw like a giant robot, like at first and they're like, what am I even looking at? Like some sort of green (laughs) robot from the matrix or something. But as we start to look a little bit closer, we can see that it's a, it's a camera pointing at, um, a, uh, blur picture, a blurry picture. Um, lots of bokeh going on. You can barely see. Yeah. Gaussian blur. Yeah, exactly. That's a, photoshop (laughs) kind of joke there (laughs) um but uh you have a different stance on who you think we're looking at so you say chewy finn and so the thing is is like ray so first of all picture is really cool it's done at like a kind of like a dutch angle not really so you had a lot of people that were kind of putting the orientation more up and down straight um I thought the first thing that jumped out to me was the camera has episode seven and then episode nine on it. Yes. Which was yeah, really so cool because obviously he's coming back for episode nine. Um, it feels like it's JJ's personal camera almost. I think you know so. I mean? Yeah. No, definitely. It was really cool. I was actually hoping it had a logo on it like Space Bear. You know what I mean? Like something <laughs> mm-hmm, that we were mm-hmm. like, that's the production logo. Well, Black um, Diamond or something, wasn't it? Well, rumors are that it's Trixie now. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Trixie. Yep. Yeah. Um, so if it's so an y- Avco, like for The Force Awakens or something, yeah, that would have been cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so from what I see, I see Chewy. I see clearly Finn. That is definitely Finn. Boyega basically was like, that's me. Um, he's wearing a new cool vest. vest. What? New new vest or jacket? What do, what do you think that is? It's definitely... It, so it looks like a new vest, but then the funny thing is he actually put up on Instagram um, a screenshot of Han Solo's original jacket going up for auction. That's the same mm-hmm. kind of pocket structure as the jacket vest that Boyega is wearing. And then Boyega said, "Fun." He said it in the clip. He was like, "Funny that this is happening on the same day." And so it was one of those things Mm -hmm. that I was like, well, are they trying to do a throwback? Which they might be. They might be trying to say, like, maybe he had that jacket on the Millennium Falcon and he ripped the sleeves off. Like, I don't know, whatever. And that's the the Empire Strikes Back jacket that they took off Han when they started torturing him on Cloud City. Yeah, so maybe it's on the ship again. I just thought it was funny Mm -hmm. that, like, it's it's a very well-known thing or, like, an awkward thing that Lando took Han Solo's clothes when he piloted mm-hmm. the Falcon, so to, yeah, to think he did wear his clothes yeah. to think that Finn would be on the Falcon wearing this vest, you know, it's like maybe they're Han Solo's clothes that he found on the ship, and that's a joke or a reference to how Lando found some clothes on the ship. Yeah, I mean, in Solo, Lando goes through the closet and pulls out the whole disguise and everything that you see in the sure, Return of yeah. the Jedi. So it kind of makes the sense that guard, they have yeah. all this stuff. And then in Force Awakens, Han Solo's going through that closet, pulling weapons out and all this stuff. So, yeah, it's possible that the jacket's in there. <laughs> um, and then the person sitting down, a lot of people thought Im- immediately it was Ray. They were like, it's definitely Ray. It looks like she has maybe a side braid. Her hair's longer. It could be her. Someone said that maybe there's a porg in the picture. I don't know if that's true. Um, <clears throat> but the the person that they think is Ray, I totally understand that it could be Ray. I get it. But... I've seen Daisy in person and she's a she's super strong, but she's still super small. And it just seemed like that person was a little 
big to be Ray, but it, I mean, it could be, it couldn't be. I don't want to say yes or no because the picture will come out months from now and everyone will be like, Lacey, you're wrong. But yeah, maybe it no, could be. There's no po. clearly it's Ray. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it could be Poe. And then someone also had a good thought that it could be JJ sitting in the chair showing him how he wants the shot done. The only thing about that, though, is yeah. JJ. It doesn't seem like the ego type, and I don't know if he would throw himself in a picture of him launching day one. That doesn't sound... I don't know JJ personally, obviously, but it doesn't seem like something he would do. Maybe he didn't take the photo. But he posted it. Yeah. yeah because it, maybe that's the only picture that they had that like didn't give anything oh, away. Oh, come on. <laughs> I, yeah. We have one picture from day one of filming. We got to tweet that one I out. Know, I'm I think that it implies that he took I think it's the photo. Po. Yeah. You think it's Poe, Lacey? Yeah, because Poe has a mm. similar shirt on at the end of Last Jedi. It's like that white shirt. I, you maybe like, like, because I I've seen Daisy Ridley in person too, and I mean whatever you want to say, she is tiny, tiny, skinny, tiny, and you're right about that. And also the one thing that steered me to um, Finn and Ray is the whole thing at the event you put on awesome con yep <laughs> where he revealed that uh we're back the gang's back together me and you were back together uh mm -hmm. being daisy and, and john boyega so immediately i thought those two on the falcon that brings us back to the force awakens i can mm -hmm. see them being together and it's the in the captain's chair and that's been her chair since han died so yeah. those things took my brain there and maybe this is jj doing his classic misdirection and maybe we're just overthinking it because we're excited that there's the first shot from sure. the photo of uh, the set i love of that episode we've nine. only had this and people are analyzing it like who could this be does she have a side braid what what is going on what's what's but you happening know what's good though no one's been a dick about it everyone's been nice to each other yeah. and been like yeah it could be that yeah, yeah. but again <laughs> yeah. it's day one so. yeah. i uh i'm on i'm definitely on the ray train i think and uh the only thing that leans me towards it, it not being her is that we clearly see john boy again a different outfit and i think mm -hmm. that it would be really cool to put ray in a very like distinct new outfit like maybe like an all black kind of thing to kind of hint at the, like, or uh, kind of seem like the Luke in Return of the Jedi, like wearing That's the That's the other thing. thing. I can't see them putting her in a white shirt. Yeah. Well, she looks like, I mean, f first well, and that's foremost. That's her Jedi garb now. She, I know she's in a different outfit in, from Force Awakens than she is in uh, Last Jedi, but it, they're similar. They're similar outfits. But and they so, get darker. She gets darker in clothing. Yeah, a little Not bit. Not anymore. Yeah. Well, I don't know. But anyway, the, the, it looks like her Force Awakens outfit. You know, and I'm like, mm. well, she's not going back to that. They're not going to put her in those clothes. So when I see that picture, I go, yeah, that's that's Ray. But then I'm like, yeah, but it's mm -hmm. Ray from Force Awakens outfit. That doesn't make any sense. So maybe it's not. Maybe it's somebody else. So I don't know. I'm just, I'm just happy to like stalwart just seeing Chewie in his chair and it's Chewie, you know? Yeah. Just something about that that sense of normalcy and and tradition made me really happy. So, John, the, I'm going to ask you the the Cardington airship sheds. So, this is mm -hmm. the first location, most likely. Uh, do you think they? Do you think the Falcon is in the Cardington airship sheds so that they can try to keep it secret so that nobody knows that the Falcon? Wait, wait, hold on. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> JJ puts an image. Hey, it's the first day of shooting. Here's the Falcon. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, right. but we did talk about that in the past that the Cardington airship sheds could be used to um, maybe keep some information private. And we also talked about on uh, numerous occasions how many times people have said, oh, the, well, there's the Falcon because you can just look at a satellite photo. But it's funny because mm -hmm. the very first image we ever get of this movie is of the falcon so it's not like they're trying to keep anything hidden and it's not like we didn't right. know that was going to be in the movie um what do you think according to airship sheds yeah so if um victoria mahoney posted that i mean let's remember she's second unit director so she could be doing second unit type shots at cardington while jj and the first units at pinewood oh it's a good um, point yep. and they could and they're calling each other on their nokia's like can you hear me now all right. Good. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? JJ? <laughs> and, you know, that kind of thing. And maybe the, maybe their Falcon is in the Cardington airship shed. Like, yeah. why not? Because, like we said, they blew up all those photos of it outside the sheds during TFA. Maybe they learned their lesson and, and put them inside and closed the doors. Or they're doing completely other types of second unit based uh, shots uh, there. And, and JJ's on Pinewood with the Falcon. And that, that, that's, my, that's my main guess. Yeah. 
All right. Well, I agree with that. I think we could probably wrap up on that story. Do you guys want to talk about who's going to be in this movie? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, the cast has been announced, uh, including the return of Carrie Fisher using previously unused footage from The Force Awakens. And now we know previously unused footage from The Last Jedi. Thanks, Clayton Sandell. Um, showing up yes. in the cast, though, we have Daisy Ridley returning, Adam Driver, John Boyega, Oscar Isaac, Mark Hamill, Anthony Daniels, Lapita Nyong'o, Domino Gleason, Kelly Marie Tran, Jonas Sutomo, Sut- Sutomo, Sutomo. <laughs> it's just Sutomo. Swotomo. Jonas Sotomo, Billy Lord. <laughs> And Billy D. Williams, all returning. Man, that's so crazy. Um, we also have new actress Naomi Aki coming in and new actor Richard E. Grant from Game of Thrones and Logan. You might recognize him from that. Um, what's funny about this big announcement that they did with all these new cast members is that shortly after, a couple hours later, you might remember, they threw in Carrie Russell. Oh, yeah, and yes. also Carrie Russell. My girl. Um, so we there was a short period of time where everybody was like, whoa, that was like one person we were very confident on, and they're clearly not in the movie. And then they were like, oh, yeah, well, she is. <laughs> um, John, uh, just to bounce off of that, you know, I would I would think she has to be shooting later in the film process, considering they just finally confirmed her one week before the movie starts shooting. Um, do you think that points to her not really having a big role or just kind of a late uh, shooting schedule? Um, what do you think? I don't know. Because is that show The American still on? Like, nope. I, I don't know what. Nope. It just yeah, so, wrapped. And and all due respect to Carrie Russell, I mean, she's not The Rock where she's in like 12 things a year. So she may have been like, her agent may have been like, look, you know, we're putting feelers out for other projects, but this thing looks like it may happen. So we're not going to book you for this time because if we do land it, this is huge for you. Uh, So, I mean, I don't think this has anything to do with her, whether she has a big role or small role. That's just my take. I mean, I'm no industry insider, but Carrie Russell doesn't seem, and she's a wonderful talent, but she's not, you know, Julia Roberts nailing down $20 million role pictures here. So this is a big deal for her. Yeah. Um, and, and with, with with that said, though, um, I I, I want to go back to what we were saying. What was it last week? And we were talking about what type of role she may have and that sort of thing. And I guess we can get deeper into that later. But I do want to dig into all this other casting stuff. And oddly, I have to say, I don't know why. I'm like a little upset that Benicio del Toro is not on that cast list mm-hmm. because I'm not. I, I just, I just feel, I feel it. Well, James and I, anyway, maybe we just like he's become like a part of the subculture of our podcast because of the maybe thing. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I just, I wanted to see him again, maybe this time turn on the First Order and kind of do his own version of balance. But uh, maybe, maybe we maybe. will. Maybe we won't see him again. But uh, I, I want to dig into more of this with you guys. But um, what, what's your take on this stuff? Uh, but r- right off for me, Kelly Marie Tran, boom, front and center. Yeah, not afraid, yep. not afraid to say that she's going to be back in the movie. And the way they list her and the way they make it seem is that they don't. It doesn't seem at all like uh, she's going to be hidden away in the background in one scene or something like that. Um, same for Billy Lord. Uh, we had speculated. Do you think she's going to have a bigger role in this? I think by putting her in the casting. Um, that's a way of also saying like we've got a little bit larger plans than we did in the other two movies. Um, no Phasma. No Phasma. I didn't even realize that until right when yeah, you said that. I didn't think about that. That's we discussed point. that last week that we were like, yeah. well, will she, won't she? And I was like, no, she's dead. Will of the Force? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. She's yeah. dead. Yeah. Yeah, I, think I, think, we all yeah, I think we all said she's toast. She's yeah. dead, but it, it would be really interesting if that was the vibe of the general fandom. And then sure enough, there you go. There's her mm-hmm. name. And, you know, mm-hmm. that's like, okay. Um, anything else uh, you spot, Lacey? Any cool little tidbits? No, I mean, the coolest thing is obviously the second African American actress is going to be in Star Wars. This is a big deal, guys. Um, and I'm John Boyega put up a really, really awesome post of him welcoming her to the bigger world. You know, mm-hmm. you're taking your steps into a larger world, just like he did with Kelly Marie Tran. Mm-hmm. So, 
That's yep. really, really cool. Um, I'm pumped about Carrie Russell, as you guys know. I really hope she's a bad guy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, this is exciting. Um, as we talked about with Clayton, I the emotion behind the Carrie Fisher stuff is really, really great. And um, it means a lot to me and everybody else. I'm, I don't want it to sound like just me, but uh, that was the thing I was most excited about. And that's why she was trending when they announced this, is that it's a big deal that they made this work. So I'm interested to see where it goes, and I know I'll be sobbing. So we're, we're, that's where we are. Well, as you were saying, to stem off of that a little bit, is you were saying you know, with with this announcement was the first time that we've got any sort of official, boom, Carrie Fisher is coming back. That's happening. And uh, what's interesting is they, they told us how they're going to do it with the unused footage and all that. Um, I will say though, uh, if you guys remember back in February, I believe Todd Fisher actually came out and told everybody, um, you know, that him and Billy Lord have given Disney and Lucasfilm permission to use recent footage of the actress in the 2019 star Wars episode nine, you know, both Mm -hmm. of us. This is a quote. Both of us were like, yes, how do you take her out of it? And the answer is you don't. Um, after right. that statement came out, everybody was like, oh, so I guess they're going to use recent footage of her and kind of just add it in. And Kathleen Kennedy came out and kind of, I believe the quote was Todd Fisher's confused. He's confused about what's going on. Don't listen to that and kind of discredit him on this. And it's funny now because we hear this information. We're like, there it is. It's confirmed. Boom. And it is, it's more confirmed than hearing it from Todd, but it is funny that he told us this months ago that this was happening. Yeah. And then you add that to what uh, Clayton revealed to us on our exclusive uh, interview that we posted last Friday and on the episode this past Monday. Um, here I am plugging us away here. Yeah. But, <laughs> it's more um, than Force Awakens. Yeah. Yeah. So they're going to be using unused, deleted footage, whatever you want to call it, that was filmed by Ryan Johnson for The Last Jedi as well. So that really opens up the possibilities more so than the narrow scenes that we thought they'd be using for the from The Force Awakens, like the like Lacey had brought up the Maz scene where handing the lightsaber was never used. Uh, you can do a lot more here. And who, who better than ILM and Skywalker Sound to make this happen? Um, and I'm thinking about more and more With that information, plus where we left off with Leia in The Last Jedi, she handed off the resistance to Poe Dameron. She said, what are you you asking me for? Follow him. And it's kind of like handing over the keys, which opens up the door for Leia to pursue more of a personal thing Mm -hmm. in Episode Mm 9, which is Kylo Ren, Ben Solo. So, Well, I don't know if you remember this. Early on with The Last Jedi, rumors were going around that there was a scene with him and her talking to each other. Now, we ultimately Mm -hmm. saw that it was them connecting via the Force in the ships, but there were rumors going around that they shot scenes together. And then when she passed away, that came to light that they shot scenes. So, who knows, you know? So, my rabbit hole and whether you guys want to kick dirt on my rabbit hole or follow me down it <laughs> is she, she's handing off the business side of Leia over to Poe and she's going on her personal journey which ha- right now has her saying my son is gone and I have to accept that so where does that take her with her personal journey with Ben and Kylo Ren we kind of feel like there's something missing there that we didn't think we'd get with Carrie Fisher dying that we may have an opportunity now which is him and her facing one like Face to face somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like we kind of need that. And um, at this point, now that we have all this new TLJ stuff added in and big surprises was the quote that Todd Fisher gave Clayton, uh, we may get it now. Well, one thing, uh, you know, I, I'm not subscribing to this, but I'm going to hear your theory out. She, <laughs> she says he's gone. And Luke responds, no one's ever really gone. And we've talked about this. I know, but... uh, (laughs) He's back. (laughs) No, no, no. You guys are jumping the gun on me here. (laughs) So... So now with that being the thing, she she was saying he's gone and Luke's confirming that no one's ever really truly lost. No one ever really truly falls. And she takes those words and she goes, all right, well, then I'm going to go try to win him back. Maybe in episode nine, she goes, tries to win him back and succeeds and that is how or i don't know maybe fails 
Maybe but we James, see. that's not James, how I took that. James, welcome. Welcome. We have no. cookies. Um, this, this is why I the started this with, to be on. Yeah. That's why I started this with, I'm <laughs> yeah, not necessarily Kool-Aid subscribing too. to this, but. <laughs> Take um, a big sip of the Kool-Aid. Yeah. I, I think it's one. James. I think it's one thing for Luke and and his whole story of like you know I thought I could nobody could be saved. He was too far gone, and he had to remember that no one really truly is gone. So I don't know. Maybe that inspires Leia to go on this personal journey. She hands the reins over to Poe. She goes on a personal journey. We get those scenes of her interacting with Kylo. I don't know. It could be kind of interesting, but it depends on how you define that. Because I know we've talked about that quote on a discussion on the on the podcast where I think most of us took that as no one's ever really gone and he hands her Han's dice saying like the memory's always there. So she'll always have the memory of Ben Solo. So he's never gone in that regard. That's how I, I took always it differently took than line. you guys. I took it the yeah, way James of course is you saying did. it. I mean, <laughs> I know, I mean of course <laughs> you did. <laughs> there's a there's a thousand ways. So I mean like, okay, we've talked about the memory of Han. We've we're now saying it could mean the the fall of been to the dark side we've yeah. even mentioned last week on last week's discussion that that line specifically could have possibly meant luke is not gone in episode eight and he will make right. his return in episode nine it's just kind of a, a pre set up what joke a good for, writer that ryan right? johnson yeah, yeah i know yeah to be, huh? three different <laughs> things meaning the same line means something to and it perfectly means everything to uh all three of the big three, the famous big but three. But months, months ago when we talked about Carrie's death and how they would handle it, that was one of the discussions we had months ago. Um, mm-hmm. I don't yeah. remember when, but I remember it was months ago. <laughs> but I had said that, you know, it could be the thing that is his breaking point. You know, mm-hmm. his mother dying could be the th- the point that makes him, him as in Kylo Ren, uh, you know, either go darker John, go darker or yes. go to the <laughs> the light side. I mean, it, this is there's so many possibilities. I'm so excited now because there's so many ways they could take this now. Because before we were just kind of writing it off. We were like, oh, they're going to kill her in the opening crawl. She's not going to be a part of it. It's just going to be kind of like mm-hmm. whatever. But now that they're like, oh, no, we have all this footage and we're going to figure it out. There's so many things they could do. That I'm just yeah. like, oh my god, there's so many ways that we could maybe get the thing that I want. <laughs> And watch we, we wanna... watch episode nine and we're like, there was too much Leia in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, I want to move on to this scoundrel's rundown, but I do want to make one more uh, little note here on the Todd Fisher um, and what his quotes were back in February that it almost kind of confirms double up on what uh, Clayton was saying last Monday that when Todd Fisher says. Uh, they gave Disney and Lucasfilm permission to use recent footage of actress, of the actress. Um, meaning, uh, you know, that could mean recent is vague, could mean Force Awakens. But when you say the word recent, you think the most recent footage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that yep. really sets up this whole dialogue for the recent footage he's talking about, his footage from Last Jedi. So it's great. And also his quote, his quote was, Big surprises. Yes. Yeah. And that fans would be happy was along the lines, right? It was like fans would yeah. be satisfied or very happy. Which makes me think Leia's not dying now, but we can talk more about that. <laughs> oh yeah. my God, have, that makes me so happy. We have a year yeah. and like five months to, to, to <laughs> tackle this. I can't wait. I'm already going right, to cry so... if Kylo dies. Can we not have Leia die too? Like I'm <laughs> yeah. literally just going to like have a stroke. <laughs> well, that being said, uh, there's still a little bit more to talk about on Todd uh, Fisher this week, but uh, we don't want to spend too much time talking about it. So we're going to send it over to the Scoundrels Rundown. Thanks, James. And to kick off this rundown, I have to like almost jokingly say like, we didn't talk about Billy D. Williams once in that cast listing because <laughs> we were so like... <laughs> We were all so convinced that it was happening that we're just like, yeah, and then Mark Hamill, Billy Dee Williams, Kelly Mary Tran. Yeah. Just like <laughs> now we're just glossing over it. We're like, now that Lando's back, it's like, okay, yeah, yeah. Because oh, we've yeah, talked Lando's about it so back. much and yeah, we just we, knew it was yeah. like so obvious yeah. it was happening. Yeah. Listeners, if yeah. you haven't heard, go back like two weeks. We had full like multiple <laughs> weeks of discussions of what his role's gonna be in the movie and stuff. So it's all we could talk about. <laughs> yep. And you'll never hear us talking about Colt 45. I knew you were, you're bringing it up. You just brought now. it up, dude. Yeah. You're the one that keeps bringing it up. It's your own problem. 
Well, Lacey's going to bleep out Colt 45 as though it's a curse. No, I'm not. So <laughs> I'm letting you take Damn credit it. every time you bring it up. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching that video. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and head over to the full episode by clicking this box here. If you want, you can subscribe. And that way you get all the weekly news. You get our discussions. You get uh, information on our giveaways whenever we do them. It's a good time. We promise. Thanks for watching the Resistance broadcast.